Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey. This is Manny. I'm Matt. Hi, my name is Chris Doyle. And, and I'm Rick Maffei. I'm a writer for Goodman Games. All right. And we're going to talk about Temple of Elemental Evil. Yeah. Um, it is the first module I ever ever uh, ran, and it's still one of my favorites. Um, so we're going to talk about Goodman Games. And they're coming out in August, I believe, August, September of 2021. And an updated version, in a sense, of uh, Temple of Elemental Evil. Um, so we, we have a lot of questions. Um, I'll let Matt go first. All right. Well, before I get started, uh, I just want to say how thrilled we are to have you gentlemen with us. Uh, viewers of the channel know that we are big fans of Goodman Games. So this is really exciting for us. So let's just jump right in. You know, I was reading recently that the Temple of Elemental Evil was voted the fourth uh, greatest D&D module. And I think we can all agree that it's pretty special. But what's so great about the Temple of Elemental Evil in your minds? Um, okay, well, I think I'll go first before I, I throw it to Rick. Well, first of all, thank you for those kudos. We, we appreciate that. Um, yes. uh, that. That's awesome to hear. Um, uh, I would say uh, it was the first super module. Um, you know, there is a, the first mega dungeon, if you will. Um, and I think a big part of it was kind of the mystique. So T1 uh, Village of Hamlet came out in 79 and they even announced right on there that, you know, T1 through four Temple of Mental Evil is coming soon. <laughs> and then if you guys are aware of the history of the product and most folks are, you know, it didn't come out for six more years. And, you know, there was no internet back then. There was no forums. There was no, no social media. So you didn't know most of the time when a book came out until you actually went into a bookstore and you were like, oh, look, it's there. You know, there was, there was, there was no, you know, Twitch shows and, and YouTube channels saying this is coming and everything. So I think the mystique mm -hmm. of, of, you know, that's the second part of it taking so long to come out, I think built that anticipation. And then when it did come out and it, that sucker was 128 pages long and it had all these maps in it and everything, I think that was probably the big appeal that really, that really, um, that helped it along. Yeah, I think at the expense of echoing Chris, which I usually, we think alike anyway, <laughs> um, I absolutely think the release schedule of the module played a big part because it was in many ways the sort of Empire Strikes Back, you know, to Star Wars and people were really kind of awaiting this grand sequel. And then when it came out and it had such scope and it was such a big dungeon, a mega dungeon, such a thick pro, uh, you know, people have been used to these very slim modules of, you know, eight or 12 or 16 pages. And here it came out this monster of a module, um, you know, so much that they labeled it T1 through four in the beginning. So. Uh, I think just that scope to get such a big, glorious adventure after a long wait, it all added it up to the experience, you know, and made it something extra special. So you were mentioning how big the, the module is, and it is, it's a, it's a huge thing. But like your other um, or uh, original adventure, Reincarnated, mm -hmm. uh, you guys are adding new material. So yes. what are you adding to the Temple of Elemental Evil? <laughs> So first of all, uh, this this is not going to be one book. It's going to be two books in a slipcover because it's that big. So we're reprinting the original um, modules, obviously, and we reprint T1 and then we're going to reprint T1 through four. So that's about 150 pages right there. But it all in all in total, this book is this the set of two books is going to be 732 pages long. It's basically basically like taking two of those other huge books and then putting them in a slip cover. Um, so it is humongous. So yes, so obviously we have the reprints of the original material. Um, we have this, the, the straight conversions of T1 and then um, T1 through four. Um, but then we did get to play around and do some interesting stuff. If you guys remember the original module, the, the village of Nolb um, was uh, the evil village counterpart to Hamlet. Only had, had a wonderful little map, but only had four places detailed. So we added another nine places to get to a nice um, uh, unhappy number of 13. Um, <laughs> and then we also um, added a whole bunch of um, uh, wilderness encounter areas. And, and a lot of them kind of tied directly into the whole plot. Um, you know, we have like a knoll lair because there's a lot of knolls in like level one or level two. And we're kind of like, hey, where are all these knolls coming from? So we kind of have a little backstory on that. Um, there were a couple of things hinted in the module and there was a couple of... Uh, 
locations actually in um, the novel. There was actually a novel of Tell oh, Mental, yeah. uh, Temple of Elemental Evil. We actually pulled some material out of that and kind of tied it in as well to kind of kind of make some fun there. And then, and Eric, why don't you tell them about what we do with the end of the module? Sure. And then, you know, toward the end of the module, uh, there are what they describe as the nodes, the four elemental nodes for, you know, fire, earth, air, and water. And they're given a very outline approach in the original work. Um, where you're really just kind of given almost bullet point, you know, treasures and monsters and sort of like a pick your own treasure and monster and put it in this cave sort of scenario. And so we, we took the notes and we fully, you know, brought everything out. So we, we fully detailed every encounter number in every uh, node. So basically we really fleshed out completely the four nodes. And, you know, I think the nice thing about doing the expansion work for this module was I don't know. I don't want to say anything about doing this was easy because it, it was uh, difficult, but it, the, finding the areas to expand was easy because in the original work, there were some places like Null and the nodes that they just gave the DM kind of a start and they didn't really flesh out a lot. And I remember even originally reading the book saying to myself, I wish they had more. I wish there were more areas in Null. I wish they gave us more details about the nodes. So here all these years later was a chance for us to actually do that and, and, and you know, flesh out those areas, which was really fun. Well, that sounds great. And that must be really exciting for you guys personally to come back and work on this module that, that you played when you were yeah. younger and the fill in the blank spots. Yeah, it, it is. It, it, yeah. It's beyond. I'll just say that everybody uh, who freelances with us, that's what they want to work on. They're like, oh, I want to work on these. It's like, yep, we know. And it's like, you know, sorry, we've already got writers for those. So it yeah. is all fun. But, as, as lovers of the original modules, you know, the early T's, both Chris and I are really big, you know, fans of the original modules. So that it's sort of a dream project in that way. It sounds like it. And um, so uh, not only writing the modules, adding the new stuff, but you had to do a lot of uh, conversion work mm -hmm. to uh, fifth edition. So I think Manny has some questions about that. Yeah. Uh, so as, you, as everyone probably knows, uh, basic rules compared to um, 5e, like worlds apart when it comes to rules. Well, so can you tell us about the process of uh, converting it to 5e? Yeah, so um, a, a big part of it is um, we do uh, full, uh, so any any monsters and obviously any NPCs that are not in the core books, so not in the monster manual, um, even if it's in another Wizards of the Coast book, we, um, we actually, we go to those and we actually reprint the entire statistics for those. Um, and then we get to create some. So uh, I'm trying to think of a good example, but there's there's monsters that you know occurred back in first edition that might not have made it to any of the fifth edition books at this point, but it appears in the module. So we get to actually, um, yeah. Now they're not official because, and, and trust me, they're not official because we've had several of them in our previous books be redone by official Wizards of the Coast projects. Some even. There's a good story about the giant crayfish that we used in um, uh, uh, in Into the Borderlands. The very first one, we we created our own giant crayfish, and then literally as we were in layout, um, an official giant crayfish was released in one of the Wizards of the Coast books. So we had to quick pull it out and put the the official one in there. Um, but that's the fun part. And and one thing about um, Temple of Mental Evil, especially once you get into the temple and then obviously the villages there are a lot of NPCs and they That's all need to be have full stat boxes. Um, and that, that takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. Um, yeah. But it's also a lot of fun to take something from first edition, especially that doesn't translate exactly and then put your own 5e spin on it and kind of develop something on it. So um, I would say the NPCs is probably one of the more interesting things. Yeah, certainly my, one of the levels I worked on was the level two of the dungeon. And there's just a lot of clerics of different levels. And, and that was a challenge. And I think one of the things that struck me during the translation work is, you know, we're all, I think, kind of aware of the general rules differences there are between editions. But the sheer amount of magic items and spells that existed in first edition that don't exist, that were never really kind of brought forward all the way to fifth edition, you know, at some edition along the way, they kind of dropped off. Um, I was shocked at just how many magic items and things were in there that there is no fifth edition version of, and they all had to basically be made whole cloth again, you know, kind of where we would just write them for fifth edition from scratch, uh, you know, when possible referring to any available uh, works, you know, that we could base them on, whether it was the original DMG or, or the original Temple of Elemental Evil or whatever we had to base it off of. 
So there was, you know, that authenticity to the items. Are there any, most, when it comes to 5 um, a lot of the target audience had to be a much younger generation. Mm-hmm. Um, is there any like uh, game master tools to help maybe uh, uh, new game masters, new dungeon masters to uh, play this game? Yeah, we, we did that a lot in um, or number one into the Borderlands because those um, original modules B1 and B2 actually had some pretty long sections on about how to be a game master because back then nobody really knew how to be a game master. Kind of like we we talked about on, on our show how, um, you know, these modules when they were first written, sometimes they're not organized well or because there was no previous modules to base off of. They were like kind of creating it from scratch. They, no one had ever written a module before. So, um, so, so sometimes that um, comes into it. Uh, but we do have a fairly extensive um, introduction chapter uh, where we go over a couple of things. Some of the, some of the pitfalls we ran into in this one, uh, obviously, um, if, if you're not familiar with our conversions, we convert exactly they are the, exactly the way the module was originally to fifth edition. And that means it's not balanced. Um, that means if there was 17 orcs and you were first level, Tough luck, 17 orcs first level. We thought about changing it, but we really didn't want to change the feel of it. We wanted it to to stay the same. Obviously, back in the day, it was a different type of playing. You learned how to run away from 17 orcs when you were first level and or or get them to fight against each other or something like that. So, but we did in the in the introductory section, we do have this pretty extensive uh, section on how to balance encounters, um, kind of expanding off of some of the material in the dungeon masters guide and how to create encounters. So we go through some some bits and pieces there on here's what you want to do if if you want to on your own you know that should really be six orcs probably you know for your party but if your party is higher level or lower level you know you want to adjust it the biggest issue i think we had with this particular module uh was the treasure yes um the treasures out of whack in in this module i mean there are there are zero level you know which is commoners in the village that have you know six thousand gp <laughs> worth of silverware <laughs> hidden in a you know in, in, a, in a split oak in the back of their yard or something like that and and it's just and and it just that's where it just starts. I mean, there are some encounters where you know you, you have giant rats, and it's like you know you're getting thousands of GP worth of gems and stuff like that. So, um, so we actually have a little section in there on where we recommend you know kind of bringing that treasure also in line. Now, back in the old days, treasure gave you experience points, so yeah. there was a very important reason why that was there. Not so much in this case here. So, uh, we go through some things definitely with magic items and and some of these larger uh, ticket items. Um, Anything that you want to add, Rick? Yeah, no, I mean, the treasure was certainly a factor because as Chris said, a lot of these older works, they would just say, well, you find a scepter that's worth 10,000 gold pieces and you just don't see that sort of thing in adventures now. Um, And, you know, the overall organization, the way we organize, uh, present the information for each encounter area, we do kind of follow that 5e structure of, you know, presenting things in a certain order. So people who are used to the more modern products we'll see the treasures, you know, sort of treasure section or paragraph appear where they're used to. So we're trying to, as Chris said, these older modules didn't always present things in the best way. Sometimes DM notes were jumbled together with, you know, things for the players and they didn't always have read aloud text and and things were very different. So we did try to clean that up and present things in a way that somebody who had never seen an older edition could just be, you know, pick this up and play it for fifth edition if that's what they wanted. And I guess that's kind of like was the fun and also the challenges. We're trying to walk that line. We're trying to very strongly preserve the original work and, and not change the treasures or the number of creatures. And, you know, we didn't want to really put our stamp on it too hard because we wanted it to be an homage to the original. But at the same time, we wanted it to be absolutely playable for people, you know, who, who want to play it for fifth edition, you know, be they brand new players or be they players who love it. And would just, you know, would love to bring it into, you know, the new game system. Um, I, I think humbly we pulled that off, but it was, it can be a challenge. <laughs> yeah. I, and I think just a quick follow up on that. Um, one of the most fascinating parts is that obviously, um, you know, Rick and I in our age group, and it looks like you guys are a little bit longer in the tooth as well. Um, <laughs> you know, we remember playing these originally back in first edition. Well, now there's a whole nother generation of gamers, uh, my son included. 
And it, we get so many awesome stories of parents who buy these books and then for the first time brought their kids through the Caves of Chaos or the Isle of Dread uh, and soon, you know, the Temple of Mental Evil. And that is so rewarding to hear that and to be able to give them a product where they can just literally just buy it off the shelf and like that very night they can be running it, you know, yeah. because they remember the encounters and now it's all, all the conversion work's been, been done for them. So that, that's so rewarding. So let's talk about a little bit about the art. Um, are you keeping a lot of the old art? Are you adding new art? If you're adding new art, what's the direction you're going with? Um, so uh, for our, for the whole fifth edition conversion part, uh, which is the majority of the book, uh, all brand new art. Uh, we've had a commission. We actually have a couple of new artists that we've used uh, for the first time, which come out great. And we do kind of, if you're familiar with other Goodman Games products, you can tell our artwork style is very much in that old school feel. It's very much, you know, very much at home in some of those first edition modules. Um, all the maps have been redone. Um, they have not been redone um, on a computer. They have been redone as a piece of artwork. Um, and, uh, and we have got a guy who specially does um, our maps for us. So he was obviously very busy on that. So, um, so all the original stuff is there from the first edition, the, the reprints of, of the original modules, but everything uh, that you get in the fifth edition has been all completely done. And we've added a lot of additional art. Most of the NPCs, all of the NPCs and all of the, the new monsters that we designed, they all have artwork as well. So, and there's uh, 17 pages of handouts uh, that we added too. So, so some things that uh, anytime we came across something in the module that sound like, hey, this would be a good handout. Like for example, the inns, uh, we, we have menus uh, that we expand up. They, some of the menus were included in there, but you know, we made them fancy, we made them handouts. So you can actually just hand that to the players and say, here, what do you want to order? Yeah. So um, so we did some fun stuff that we, we, I have to admit working for Goodman Games is amazing. Um, when we do a project like this, there's like no limit. It's just like, yeah. what do you want to do? It's like, you know, you want all new artwork? Sure. You want artwork for all of the NPCs? Sure. It's like, but there's 47 of them. Yeah, go ahead anyway. <laughs> it's like, you know, these, these projects are, these products are a little bit different than, you know, a little 20 page, you know, thin module. So we get to, we get to have a lot of fun and kind of play in that sandbox. Definitely. I think, yeah, I think we've got some really good art in the, in the fifth edition, you know, again, the, first, the, the reprint section is absolute scans of the original, but then in the fifth edition translation part, uh, portion, as Chris said, we've got the whole new art, which I think is we've really got some wonderful pieces of art in there. And I had a hand in suggesting a lot of the art. So with a lot of the scenes I would describe that the artist would then inter you know, interpret and produce, uh, I really tried to come up with set scenes that I felt were old school or that evoked that same vibe of, you know, the Temple of Elemental Evil. So I, I think we've kind of carried it. We tried to be faithful even with the, the new art to retain that spirit of the original. Yeah. And, and, and on artwork, uh, so if you guys are familiar with our books, you know that we do these essays in the beginning by gaming luminaries. So we have um, an interview with Jeff Easley that sprawls 22 mm, yeah. pages, I believe. Um, and it's full of just all of his artwork and sculpture work and different things that he's done. And it is a fascinating read. I won't give up too many tidbits, but there is one part that's really fascinating. If you go back in the original module, several of the pieces of artwork were signed by Jack Fred. And there was no Jack Fred on TSR staff and he's not in the, the credits of the book or everything. Apparently, I won't, I won't spoil the story. So you'll have to read it to, to find out what the story is. But um, it's fascinating that there are several pieces and they hid the name in and we've got a little, we've got a little call out section to show, kind of a blow up of some of the artwork to show you where the name's hidden. Yeah. Um, and we have the whole backstory of what Jack Fred's all about. And some of our freelance artists even signed some of their pieces, Jack Fred, which was really cool. They came up with that on their own. Yeah, it was just a really, really nice little homage that they kind of put in too. So there's a couple of other little Easter eggs hidden in there too. We, we love putting little Easter eggs in Absolutely. since these are products from the late 70s and the 80s. If you're familiar with our other um, uh, original adventures reincarnated, we, we love putting little Easter eggs in there. Usually we'll do a whole little article on, did you find all the Easter eggs? So <laughs> that we put in there for pop culture and whatnot, songs and um, movies and stuff like that. So we have a lot of fun with it. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of essays, I'm gonna pass this to Matt. I know he has some questions about, about um, some old material stuff. <laughs> Well, I did, but you you kind of touched on it. I don't I don't know if you want to give anything else away. I was I love these original adventure reincarnated, not just for the adventures, but um, for the history. I, mm -hmm. I love the fact that you include reprints of the original modules, and um, 
I love I love the essays you have um, from from creators and other people around the modules talking about the histories. So uh, I was going to ask you uh, what sort of gaming legends you had to uh, <laughs> writing in the in in this book, but uh, yeah, <laughs> you do it. <laughs> Yeah, well, that was that. That's just one of them. We we have several yeah. others. Uh, we have John Peterson, um, who wrote "Playing at the World." Uh, he did a phenomenal, um, much like you say. I think you're going to love this one. Basically, the backstory of you know what was going on at TSR at the time when when this module's coming out. Which you know, this was a very tumultuous time uh, for TSR. I mean, I mean, literally, uh, Gygax was forced out of TSR. I think it was two months or a month after this was printed. So, um, so he gives a wonderful, wonderful backstory of that. Um, and he includes in it a couple of scans from original maps that Gary had done for the module and even Dave Arneson had done because Dave Arneson actually yeah. um, designed a couple of parts of it as well. Um, and then we have a really fun article by um, Stephen Chenault uh, from Troll Lord Games. Um, and, uh, and he's got a great picture of himself back in the uh, early 80s, I think it was, actually running a game. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's great to see a, a picture like that. It inspired us. It inspired us as a staff, actually, to ask all of our freelancers to go dig back in and pull out old pictures of us gaming yes. uh, back in the 80s. And most of us, to be honest with you, don't have pictures because who was taking pictures of a bunch of kids right. with pop and <laughs> tips around a table doing something? We didn't think this was going to be something that 40 years from now we're still going to be doing. This, for all we know, this was going to be a fad like, you know, Pogs or something like that and was going to be gone. But, you know, it's still with us and all that. So, so we have, so we actually have a couple of pictures of some of us, our staff members that, um, back in the day. Um, and then there's a couple of other articles by some other luminaries too. I won't spoil it all, but there's, I think six total, yeah. um, different okay. essays in there. So about 40 pages worth of essays and background and everything. Yeah. It's a great, it's a great section, especially too. Like I, I personally, I love the fact that we were able to put in some original sketches of you know the temple for instance there's an original there's a sketch of the original temple grounds uh that guy gax had you know kind of penciled out and we we're able to include that in so uh wow. a little extra history that just sounds amazing this book sounds like a, a just great i can't wait to get a hold of this thing <laughs> it is great i am um, i love your uh your work on the original adventures reincarnated um so are there any more? Do you have any other original events? <laughs> um, nothing that we can announce yet. Um, yeah. So obviously these are officially licensed for, through Wizards of the Coast. And um, th that's, that adds an extra layer to things, um, sure. uh, even above uh, my pay scale. So, um, but we, we are working uh, really hard to try and get the next one. Um, we did announce um, a couple months ago that we actually, um, we have a licensing deal with some of the old um, Judges Guild modules. So we will be coming out with uh, Dark Tower uh, we announced that uh, that is our first one, and there's probably going to be some more of, of that too. So that's an, uh, another exclusive license that we have. But but yeah, we uh, that's probably the most asked question that we get. Um, that and also, is there a PDF with it? <laughs> um, and and it's like no, because Wizards of the Coast doesn't let us do a PDF. We we would certainly love to do a PDF because yeah. we are all about making our products very usable at the table. And we'll be honest with you, a 300 page book hardcover is not that easy to use at a table. Um, we would love to be able to because we give pdfs out with all of our other products but if we could we would exactly yeah. exactly but we can't so so yeah so uh nothing that we can announce uh, right now but we are working hard on that next one um and uh you know stay tuned um i would like to plug a couple of things if people want to find out some more things about uh temple of elemental evil uh rick and i do our own twitch show um every uh three sundays uh so basically every third sunday um at 8 p.m eastern time we do a show called talking tsr um, we have th done a bunch of episodes on Temple of Elemental Evil. So if you're curious to get some more information on what we did with the book, uh, I think we've got like three episodes of that and one more upcoming. Our, our next show is actually this Sunday night. Um, and then if folks want to experience some of the fifth edition uh, Temple of Elemental Evil before it's out in stores, uh, we have... Uh, uh, set up uh, a, an association with uh, 20 sides to every story. Uh, they are a Twitch show um, that the, they do live playthroughs. They do a lot of um, our other previous books, but we actually hook them up with uh, with with some of uh, the material from Temple of Mental Evil. And for the last couple of weeks, they've been running through. I think they do it every Friday night. Uh, so folks want to see that um, Temple of Elemental Evil in fifth edition being played 
um, they can check that out and uh, through 20 sides to every story. Yeah. So this will be out again in August, September of, of this year? Yes, it's been sent to the uh, the printer. Um, it's going to be on a boat at some point. Uh, we've already seen the official mock-ups and everything, so um, it, it's 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 real. <laughs> um, but w one thing to note: when when we sent the final document off to the printer and they saw that it was seven hundred and thirty-two pages, they said, "Uh oh, we need to order more paper because we don't have enough paper in stock to actually print all these books." <laughs> so when the printer tells you that they don't have enough paper, uh, that tells you how big the book is. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, as soon as uh, we get the, you know, as soon as we get that tracking number, I, right now, I think we are on track. Obviously, uh, you guys are probably aware there's a lot of shipping issues in the world right now. So I would not be surprised if that gets uh, delayed, but everything has been sent off. I believe it was back in March. So as soon as it's all printed and on a boat and then gets here, it'll be out. We're, we're fingers crossed it's going to be yeah, August. Sure. It might be more like September. Oh, excellent. Well, I can't wait for this book to be in my hands. I have some players I need to torture. I mean, I'll play with, <laughs> with this game. Um, so yes, uh, viewers out there, uh, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you're excited about this as we are. We'll put all the links in the description below. Um, stay safe out there, get your shots, and have a great day.